So before the whole coronavirus arrived, in January, February, and early March, we had begun to do a study on the church. Because we have several people that have been coming to Down City that are not yet members. And also, thank, thankfully, week after week, people will arrive, and we want people to understand what the church is all about. What is the church? Why does the church exist? What is its mission? And what are the methods that it uses to accomplish this mission? And by the way, do you guys know the scripture teaches all these things? It's no secret what a church is, what its purpose is, what its mission is, or its methods. So I want you to see this with me this morning, okay? I'm going to review where we left off, and then going forward, we're going to pick up here. Some of you guys are only here for a few weeks of your life. Some of you guys are just visiting. I hope this will be a big encouragement to you. And that wherever you settle, you will take this with you. For all of us that live here, that this will be a tremendous encouragement to us to realize who we are, why we're here, what we're all about, and how we're going to do it. It is very clear from the scripture. So I want to welcome everyone this morning to Down City Church. The reason we call it Down City Church is because the city of Providence has 26 neighborhoods, the neighborhood you are in is called Down City. Down City goes from the State House. It goes over here to Way Bossett Street, where Johnson and Wales University is. That is the. It goes from there to the river, and from the river to the highway. From the highway to the river to the State House to Johnson and Wales. That is called Down City. We are in that neighborhood. The reason why we name this church after that neighborhood is that's because if you read the Book of Acts. Wherever the church would go, wherever they would start one, they would call it after the name of the region they were in. The church at Galatia, the church at Ephesus, the church at Corinth. We are the church at Down City. Now, what is the purpose of Down City Church? What is its mission and its methods? I want to go through those this morning. First of all, what is the identity of the church? Who is the church? And I'm going to give you a definition. And by the way, for all of us, going forward, I'm going to have this for you printed out in writing. Because what we want to do eventually, as anyone begins to come to Down City, we would be able to hand this to them, and they would know who we are, what we're about, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. We want everyone to know that comes to Down City that you've entered into somewhere that's going somewhere and is going there on purpose. I'm going to give you a definition of the church from the scripture. The church is all the believers in the gospel throughout the ages who have been selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Spirit to be the holy bride of Christ, house of God, and light of the world. So when you hear the name church, a true New Testament church, are people who believe the gospel. That Christ and Christ alone has died for our sins, was buried, and was raised. They believe in him and him alone and no other name. Amen. They're the church. The Bible says the church is all the believers in the gospel throughout the ages who have been selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by the Holy Spirit to be the holy, that means the set apart, bride of Christ. One day the Bible tells us in Revelation 19, all those who have been saved throughout all the ages are going to go to a great marriage, the wedding of the Lamb. We are human beings who have believed in Christ and have been set apart, saved, and sealed to be his bride. On this earth, we are to be the house of God. We are the place, the Bible says, where God dwells. We are being built by the Holy Spirit into a holy dwelling place for God. As the house of God, we are his family. 
And then thirdly, not only have we been selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Holy Spirit to be the bride of Christ in the house of God, but also to be the light of the world, as we spoke about last Sunday. That's who the church is. In the church, everyone who is a true member of a real church, they are the true church, they all have the same four identifying markers. This is how you know who a Christian is. You can identify them four ways. They all bear the same four marks. Number one, they bear the mark of repentance. They have had a change of their affections, their mind, and their will toward God and toward sin. A person who has been selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Holy Spirit, and set apart to be the Holy Bride of Christ, the house of God, and the light of the world. Everyone who this has happened to, first of all, bears the mark of repentance. There has been a change of their affections, the way they think and what they want, toward God and toward sin. Number two, the identifying mark of every believer in the gospel is faith. They have an enduring conviction that the gospel is the truth. It is a deep persuasion of the heart that endures. They believe the gospel is true. Thirdly, they all have this identifying marker. They all have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Bible says, You are a letter from Christ, known and read by all men, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. And how does a person know they have the Holy Spirit? He is performing ten functions in the life of every Christian. He is assuring them, consecrating them, empowering them, freeing them, helping them, illuminating them, leading them, regenerating them, reminding them, and transforming them. He is doing this actively in the life of these people. And the fourth identifying mark of a Christian so we have repentance, a change of affection, mind and will toward God and toward sin. We have faith, an enduring conviction that the gospel is true. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit, assuring, consecrating, empowering, filling, illuminating, freeing, helping, leading, regenerating, reminding, transforming. And fourthly, baptism. Every Christian is a person who identifies, who publicly confesses and commits to Christ. The Bible says in the book of Acts, And when they received his word, they were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. So this is who the church is. The church is all the believers in the gospel. And how do you know who the believers in the gospel are? You will see the evidence of repentance, the evidence of faith, the evidence of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of baptism. They have made a public commitment to Christ. These are all the believers in the gospel throughout the ages who have been selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Holy Spirit to be the holy bride of Christ, house of God, and light of the world. This is who the church is. Now, that is who Down City, so what Down City Church is, is all the believers in the gospel in this area who have experienced a change of affection, mind, and will toward God and toward sin, who have an enduring conviction that the gospel is true, who have received the Holy Spirit, who's in the process of transforming and regenerating, renewing all the things that he does, and who have been publicly confessed and committed to Christ in baptism. We are all those people in this area. That's who Down City Church is, okay? Number two, what is the purpose? What does the Bible say? Why is the church here? Listen to what the scripture says, Romans 15, verse 6. 
that you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do all to the glory of God. The Bible says in Galatians 1 verse 24, the Apostle Paul said, when my life changed, they glorify God because of me. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 21, to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Scripture tells us in Philippians, or excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know what the purpose of the church is, everyone? To declare and demonstrate how great God is. That is why the church is here. That's the big idea. That's the whole reason why you're here. The whole reason why you've been selected by God the Father and saved by God the Son and sealed by God the Holy Spirit is to be the bride of Christ, the house of God, and the light of the world. And by your words and your life, you demonstrate how awesome God is. As we just heard in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, you proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. That is the purpose of the church. Now, what is the church's mission? The purpose is why, mission is what? Mission is what we do, purpose is why we do it. Why we do it is to declare and demonstrate how great God is. But what do we do to accomplish that purpose? Before I answer that, you know, you guys know I own a business with my brother called Experience Rhode Island Tours, and we have a mission statement there. And I was reading about Disney. You know, Disney has something called Disney University, where they actually will train their employees on their purpose and their mission, how they're going to do it. And the guy who was the founder of Disney University wrote this back in 1955. He said, the purpose of Disneyland is to create happiness for others, period. And you see, the beautiful thing about saying we're going to create happiness was then I could say, look, you may park cars, clean up the place, sweep the place, work graveyard, and everything else. But whatever you do is contributing to creating happiness for others. The purpose of the church is to declare and demonstrate how great God is. And everything we do is for that purpose. So what is it that the church does? The mission of the church is to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved and become mature in Christ. I'm going, to, I'm going to share several scriptures with you to demonstrate this to you. The mission of the church, the purpose of the church, is to declare and demonstrate how great God is. What does the church do? The mission of the church is to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved and become mature in Christ. And as that happens, their lives and the life of this congregation in Providence will declare and demonstrate how great God is. So, for example, listen to the New Testament. Jesus says to his disciples, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. You know what a disciple is? The word disciple means a Christ follower, both in faith and in practice, both in what you believe and in the way you live, you follow Christ. Go therefore and make Christ followers of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. See, 
the mission of the church is to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved by it and then become mature in it. So the goal for everyone who is a member of the church is that you're going to grow up into Christ. You are going to be follow him more and more in your practice. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, we all with an unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to the next. There is a progressive transformation happening in the life of every person who has believed in the gospel. They have received the Holy Spirit and he's in the process of transforming them. I just found out this past week, I don't know how many of you guys know this, there is a pirate museum in Cape Cod, in Yarmouth. Apparently these guys, some years ago, went diving out into the Atlantic Ocean. And there's, a, there's an area there where over the years, pirate ships sank. They have been for years now recovering things off a particular pirate ship, and today it's a museum. You can go there and see the treasure. And I was watching Yankee Magazine the other day, and they were showing this guy back in one of the rooms, and he was digging the coins out of his treasure chest. They were covered with all kinds of grime, and they were very carefully cleaning off these coins, and eventually, over time, it reveals the face of the coin in the inscription. That's what's happening in the life of every Christian. The Holy Spirit is taking away the crime and revealing Jesus. The Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, My little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. So this is what's happening at Down City Church. These are all people who have been called by God. They share four, they all share these marks. A change of affection, mind, and will toward God and sin. An enduring conviction that the gospel is true. The presence of the Holy Spirit in their life, transforming, cleansing, regenerating, reminding, helping, and they have publicly confessed to and committed to Christ. He is in the process of making them a beautiful bride to give to Christ one day, into a, into a more beautiful house of God, and into a brighter, shining light of the world. The reason why these people have been set apart by, by God is to declare and demonstrate to everyone else who lives in this area how great God is. The way this church does it is by, by living, proclaiming, and preserving the gospel. So that everyone who believes will grow to maturity. Christ will be formed in them. The Bible says in the New Testament, he gave the apostles, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers for... The equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of God, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, to mature manhood, so that we would no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried around by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into him in every way, into the head, into Christ. God wants his church to grow up, grow up into Christ, to become more mature in him. The Bible says in Philippians 1, verse 25, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, I know that I will continue and remain with you for your progress and joy in the faith. I'm going to help you progress. Colossians 1, verse 28, Paul writes to the Colossians, Him we preach, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom 
that we may present everyone mature in Christ. So guys, the purpose of the church is to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved and become mature in Christ. That their life will become more and more, that the grime will be clean, cleansed off, and more and more the one that you see in them is Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up into salvation. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. And for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, verse 18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Do you hear that theme all the way through the New Testament? The church's mission is to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved and become mature in Christ. By the way, guys, if you look at our program this morning, I want to point out something to you. If you look at the front of the program, notice that slogan we have under the title, on purpose. Believing the Word, living the Word, teaching the Word. That's what Down City Church does. Believe the Word, live the Word, teach the Word. And notice the mission statement. The mission of Down City Church, here we go, that's the purpose, to know and make known the greatness of God. How? By believing, living, and telling the gospel so that what will happen? And maturing those who believe so they know him, love him, trust him, obey him, serve him, and bring others to him. That's the goal. The goal is that everyone who comes to Down City Church, who knows Down City Church, will both see and hear the gospel. And as we grow, they'll see it and hear it in a more beautiful, more accurate way. That God will use that to save them like he did us. Give them a change of affection, mind, and will toward God and toward sin. To give them an enduring conviction that the gospel is true. That they will receive the Holy Spirit who in turn will assure and cleanse and consecrate and empower and free them. Amen. That they will also publicly confess and commit to Christ. And then as they do, we keep on expounding and applying the gospel so that they may become mature in Christ and may represent him and declare him in a more accurate yeah. and beautiful way. Now, guys, that's who the church is. That's why the church is here. That's what the church does. Now, the fourth thing, and this is where we left off in March, what are the church's methods? How does the church accomplish this mission to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel and with, with the result being that we fulfill our purpose, that we demonstrate and declare how great God is. A method, by the way, the definition of a method is a way of doing something. This is the way we do this. What are the church's practices? And these are the five we've discussed coming into the spring. Number one, when you read the New Testament, one of the methods that the church practices 
to live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel so that people will be saved and become mature in Christ is they practice Bible study. The Bible says that they devoted themselves, they gave careful, constant attention to the apostles' doctrine. As I told you at that time, the apostles' doctrine is the whole word of God about the gospel of his grace in Jesus. They give careful attention to it. As we saw this in Ecclesiastes as well, the Bible tells us in the New Testament, all scripture, all 66 books of the Bible, have been breathed out by God and are profitable for doctrine, for, that's for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Guys, if you and I will immerse ourselves into the 66 books of the Bible, they are entirely sufficient to bring me to full maturity in Christ. And that is why our first practice as Down City Church is we give ourselves to the practice of the 66 books of the Bible, the study of them. Now, what does that mean? Practically speaking, that means we gather twice a week on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights to cover two different portions of the Bible. That way we can accelerate your understanding of it. You're putting it to use. So that more and more the grime of your old life is wiped off and more and more Jesus shines through. And the thing he's going to use to do that, he's going to use his word. That's what he's going to use. So we have the public teaching of God's word. And what does that mean? That means you expound and apply the gospel. That's what the Bible does. It explains it and then applies it. So we give ourselves the practice of Bible study, publicly, corporately, and personally. That's why the men are getting together next Saturday. Have a great time. Fellowship with one another and encourage each other in the things that are true. That's why, for all of you that go to Down City, you know we, we're all, a bunch of us are on an app called WhatsApp. We encourage each other during the week with what's true. We encourage people on their own to be reading the scripture on their own, hiding it in your heart. That's the tool God's going to use. He sanctifies you with the truth. So the first method is the practice of Bible study. Number two, the practice of fellowship. The New Testament says the early church gave careful attention to this. Fellowship means to have companionship, community, friendship. And the Bible gives us 31 commands of Christian fellowship. Some of you guys have these. If you don't, we can get one for you. These are the 31 commands of Christian fellowship that we, we learn and practice at Down City. Be at peace with one another. Be hospitable to one another. Be kind to one another. To encourage one another. Forgive one another. Give to one another. Honor one another. Love one another, pray for one another, show mercy to one another, teach one another all the commands of Christian fellowship. God is going to use that to take away the grime of your old self and make Christ shine. You need to be a part of community, of companionship. That's also why we're having a chili challenge in the game night. Why we're gonna go bowl and I'm gonna win the trophy again this year because you guys are gonna be happy for me. I'm gonna be thankful. <laughs> <laughs> but we do this guys, we give ourselves to the practice of fellowship. Thirdly, the New Testament says the Christians gave themselves to the practice of worship. The Bible says every week when they would gather on the first day of the week, they would celebrate the Lord's Supper. Sometimes you guys have heard. Uh, it called the Eucharist. The word Eucharist is a Greek word which means to give thanks. The Bible says that we should do this. We should let the word of Christ dwell in us richly 
teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Guys, if we are going to live and proclaim the gospel in such a way that people are saved and become mature in Christ, so that everyone sees how great God is, when you guys come to Down City, you see right at the window, it says, there it shouts right from the window, God lives and saves, it says right in the window right there. Well, how do they know that? They're going to hear that and see that from us as we live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel. And people become more mature in Christ. And they declare him and demonstrate him in a more and more beautiful way. And how does that happen? What are the methods that we employ for this to happen? We give ourselves to the practice of Bible study. We give ourselves to the practice of fellowship. We give ourselves to the practice of worship. Number four, we give ourselves to the practice of prayer. This is what the believers do. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12, Paul wrote to the Colossians that Epaphras, who is one of you, is struggles mighty for you in his prayers, that you might be fully assured and mature. And that is why when you come to Down City, when you come here on Wednesday night, in fact, if you go to that table or right back there, everyone who comes here's name is on that prayer list. We pray by name. That's why I told you guys personally every day of the week, I've chosen seven New Testament prayers, one for Sunday, one for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, which I pray for everyone by name who comes to Down City that God will do this in their life. That's why we have a night set up every single week where the first portion of that night is given to corporate prayer. This is what this is the method the church employs. It practices Bible study, it practices fellowship, it practices worship, it practices prayer, and fifthly, it practices the spiritual gifts. Spiritual gift, as we saw back in March, is an endowment, it is an equipping, it is a furnishing, it is supplying by God's Spirit of an ability that builds up, encourages, and strengthens the believers. The Bible says when you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, you are furnished by Him, you are equipped by Him, you are supplied by Him, with at least one and sometimes multiple spiritual gifts that build up, that encourage, and that strengthen all the other members of that house of God. And guys, when God gives you a gift, He wants you to use it. That's why there's no such thing in the New Testament as a Christian who is not a member of a local church. There's no such thing. Because God wants you to put them to practice. And you've got to put them to practice with real people. So guys, this is our calling. I want you to consider your calling this morning. To be the set-apart bride of Christ, house of God, in light of the world. We are here to declare and demonstrate how great God is by living, proclaiming, and preserving the gospel. The way we do this is through the practice of Bible study, the practice of fellowship, the practice of worship, the practice of prayer, the practice of spiritual gifts, and two more. I'm going to reveal the next one next Sunday. Now, this is where the church is going. This is where we're going. Down City Church has been set up, selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Holy Spirit to be the set-apart bride of Christ, house of God, and light of the world. We, we all share four common things. A change of affection, mind, and will towards God and towards sin. An enduring conviction that the gospel is true. 
the presence of the Holy Spirit transforming, renewing, regenerating our lives. And we have all publicly confessed to and committed to Christ in baptism. And the reason why we exist is to declare and demonstrate how great God is. And the way we do this is by living, proclaiming, and preserving the gospel. And the way we do that is for the practice of Bible study, fellowship, worship, prayer, and spiritual gifts. Which you want. Now this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. And we'd love for everyone to be with us. The Bible says, consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you are wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, the things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us righteousness from God. Wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. So that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. That I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. He wrote to the Colossians, I do not cease to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the gospel, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, walk worthy of God, who has called you into his own kingdom and glory. And then Thessalonians says, to this end, we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of your calling to be the bride of Christ, the house of God, and the light of the world. And may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. That's the purpose of the church. And you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, we have an awesome calling. Consider that calling. You know, everyone wants their life. It's a normal thing. To, to, you want to live a life that has purpose beyond just the fact that you ate and slept and, and drank and, and another year went by your life and you disappeared off the earth and that was it. But something that endured. You could have no higher calling in your life than to be selected by God the Father, saved by God the Son, and sealed by God the Spirit to be the Holy Bride of Christ house of God and light of the world. There is no greater calling than that. And God has chosen you. You did not choose him. He chose you. That you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. That your life would both declare and demonstrate how great God is as you live, proclaim, and preserve the gospel. For the practice of Bible study and the practice of fellowship and the practice of worship and the practice of prayer and the practice of spiritual gifts. And the longer you live, the light of the righteous, but the, the righteous is like the light of dawn. Right, Renee? It shines brighter and brighter until full day. His life is getting brighter. More and more the old is being removed. And more and more he looks like Jesus. And people give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Consider your calling. Lord, we pray that you would help us at Down City Church to walk worthy of our calling. And we understand it. And we clearly understand who we are, why we're here, 
what we are to do and how we are to do it. And Lord, may you be glorified in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, both now and forever. Amen.